y'all are not gonna believe how stinking cute this is. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Beth. Thank you so much for dropping by. Today I am doing a little DIY. It's spooky season y'all and I've been wanting to make one of these, well several of these different versions for a while and I've already tried it and made some and I wanted to make some more and share that with you because it's a very simple very fun way to add a little bit of vintage inspired Halloween to your decor. So what are we making today? We're making the vintage inspired boo buckets. I've made a ghost and I put the word boo on the back and I made a cat and I made two more. I made a jack-o-lantern and I even tried a Frankenstein. Y'all, aren't these super cute? I just can't get over how super darling these are. And guess what, y'all? They're very easy. I am not an artist. I paint big furniture. I don't paint intricate details. Um, but I wanted to show you how fun and easy that these can be. And I'll give you a close-up of each one. I've already put a little bit of candy in these, um, but let me give you a close up of each one. So here is my jack-o-lantern vintage inspired boo bucket, super darling. Again, here is my ghost, and I did put boo on the back of that one. Uh, here is the cat. This is the black cat just black on the back, and then my Frankenstein. And you can tell I'm no artist, but it sure was fun making these. So I thought that I would do a little quick tutorial for you because you're not gonna believe how easy these are. So let's get crafting, y'all. Let me tell you what I use to make these darling Vintage Inspired Boo Buckets. The first thing that I had to try to find was these. Now I've already opened them. So I'm going to insert a picture right here. Y'all, I looked everywhere and some of them can be very, very pricey. I found a set of 12 for $3.97 at Walmart and they were in the kind of the plant section in the back, but they are 12 peat pots. Let me just show you. 12 peat pots, and this is the Jiffy. These are the three inch peat pots. Um, and of course, I got 12 of those, and I've already made four, so I have several left. You'll also need some paint. So I've got white paint for the ghost. Um, I've got black paint for the cat. I didn't have any orange earlier, so I went and bought orange for the pumpkin. And then I have the green and the black for the um, Frankenstein. Now for the eyes, I've also got a yellow color. I've got some red. Um, so those are all the colors that I used. Then um, I tried a little bit of something different. In the beginning, I wanted to use this wire. Um, and so I think it is like 12 gauge wire. I could be wrong, but I think I found this at the Dollar Tree. It's just like a little copper colored wire. I may have found it at Walmart. I'm not sure. Um, I wanted black, but they didn't have black. And then I thought, well, silly, you have all of these shiny, fun chenille stems. And when I say I have a bunch, I have a bunch. So I've got white and black and green and silver and orange. So I will tell you that this wire is very, very thin. I mean, you can manipulate it any way that you want to. Um, but I kind of think I like this one as well. Now I didn't add a bow, which is the other thing. I got several different kinds of ribbon and it is no more than about a five eighths inch um, so that I could tie it around. So I have the black and white polka dot ribbon. I have the orange, regular orange ribbon and then some orange check, orange and white gingham check but I did not add a ribbon to Frankenstein. Um, one thing that I will tell you, when I made Frankenstein, I put his little bolts here and I painted them. But since then, I've thought, what if I added a vintage button to this? 
just to add a little flair. So I might do that one on my next one. Um, there's a few tips and tricks that I'm gonna share with you. I also have the filler. I have orange filler and white filler. Um, I really wanted black filler, and y'all, I could not find that black filler anywhere. I found it at Party City, but for one bag, it was $5. Now, I remember it used to be at the Dollar Tree, which is where I got this, but I was wanting to use things that I already had in my house so I just went with some black tissue paper and I do have a little bit of the green down in there, which you probably have in your Easter basket stuff. That's all that you need other than the candy. And we'll talk about the candy in a few minutes. I mean, I really tried, okay? I just will tell you that up front. I tried with the candy. Um, so let's get started and let's go into first step, which is painting and possibly trimming. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, some of these peat cups. Um, so you will need some scissors. These are very easy to cut. So let's get our boo buckets out um, of here and get ready to paint. I also forgot to tell you that I used a pencil and of course some paint brushes, but y'all could figure that out. Um, so let's talk about the peat cups. They come like this. And if you notice on mine, I cut the rim off, all except the Frankenstein. I didn't cut the Frankenstein because I wanted to paint his hair black up here and then have his, some little spikes coming down. So he's the only one that I left. However, you don't have to cut these down. You can do the whole thing orange or the whole thing white or black or whatever, and you never have to cut them down. It's just a preference that I have to cut these. So I cut right under the rim of these and I kind of cut a little square and then I bend it down so that I can get my scissors down in there. So we're just gonna cut off the top ledge or edge. And I had the hardest time finding these. Um, I actually was going to make them much sooner, um, but I couldn't find them. And then when in doubt, go to Walmart and you'll find it. So then you will have a cup that looks like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other ones because I do want to cut my ghost, my pumpkin, and my cat. See, I just make a little hole by bending it. So they're really easy to manipulate. This one I'm probably gonna leave because um, that's gonna be a Frankenstein. Now I'm gonna try to get all four of these done in um, one video. I'm not an artist, I'm not very good at drawing and things, but I will say that I would look at some vintage pictures that I would find on Pinterest or something, and I would get my designs from there. So I kind of had my phone handy when I was making these. So this one is gonna be a little bit brighter, this orange, than my orange, because again, I created that. Um, if you wanna make it a little bit darker, you can always put a little bit of red in there, but let's find out first if we like it. All right, so I can tell you that this is going to be, and it's actually called Jack-O-Lantern. That's the color, um, but it's a little bit bright, but it might be okay for the purpose of this video. But when you look at the paper mache colors, it has a little bit more red in there, okay? So I may add a little, just a touch, let's just add a touch of red to uh, this orange. See if I can darken it up just a little bit. And because the uh, cups are that uh, moss, sometimes they will uh, soak up the paint. So you do need a little bit more paint than I anticipated anyway. So these are just really fun. Kids can help you make these. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit, so if you notice, it's not as bright and neon-y orange as it was. So let me paint some over here and you'll be able to see the difference. So if you don't like your orange, 
So there's the first one and there's the second one. See that light color? It's a little bit. You can just keep adding red to it and it will darken it up a little bit. I will say that you're going to paint all the way around the cup and the bottom, uh, which most people won't see, but I just like the finished look of it. I'm gonna get paint all over me because if you've watched any of my other DIYs, which I will link the playlist in the description below, and I will put a few of my DIYs in the iCards above. I will tell you that I paint just a little over the edge and the reason is because you may still be able to see down in there. I put a good bit of paint on there just because it does soak it up. Right, so I'm actually gonna lay this on its open side to dry, all right? My next one is probably gonna be the white. I'm gonna use my white and I'm gonna do a ghost. I'm going to start the white. And again, I'm just painting it regular, paintbrush, just white, no fancy stuff included. So let's get it done. And just like that, my white one is all painted. The next one that I'm going to do is the black. So this is going to be really easy. Um, we are going to start here and through the magic of video, looks like our black cat cup is all painted up. So that's another one that goes over here to dry. Now I'm going to move on to the Frankenstein and you could probably do like a devil or you could do a witch and maybe do her face purple. I didn't do a witch because how would I do the nose? Maybe I should try a witch. I'm going to start through the bottom here is going to be this I use, it's called Citron Green. It's a very bright green. Um, so I'm gonna do the bottom green and I'm gonna do the top edge, the little lip here, I'm gonna do that black. So I already have black on my brush. Let me do black just on the edge. That will be my starting point for this one. And remember, I go a little bit over the edge on the inside, just so that it looks uh, finished. Okay, the top is done. I am gonna paint everything else the bright green color. So hang on and we'll do that together too. Let's get to painting the bottom. So I'm gonna go right up underneath the edge and just where the edge meets. And when I do the hair, when I come in and do the hair, you can kind of shake your brush like that. When I come in and do the hair, I will paint over some of this green, but I just wanna paint this whole bottom section green for the um, Frankenstein. And the more I think about it, the more a witch would be fun. I just need to figure out how I would do her face. Because honestly, y'all, I'm not an artist at all. Um, I do like to paint. I wanted to do one of the ghost painting trends. Um, and I even found a picture that was already in my booth. Um, somebody pointed it out. That would have been a, go a great ghost painting trend. Did anybody do that one? Let me know in the comments below if you did that trend where you took a picture um, that you, it's called the thrifted, thrifted ghost painting trend, maybe. Um, I saw it on all the shorts and on Instagram. It's basically where you find a, um, a thrifted picture and you change it to like add some little ghost and some fun fall things in there. But that was really, that was a really cute idea. And maybe if that picture doesn't sell in my booth, Maybe I'll go ahead and paint that and have it ready for next year. I'll be ahead of the game, finally. I think I'm gonna leave this one kind of sitting on the bottom. Um, no one will see the bottom. I'm going to let all of these dry 
they don't take very long. Um, as a matter of fact, the white one is just about dry now. Um, it just depends on how much water is in your paint. Um, and then once we get those dry, it will be time to kind of draw out the face that we want to use on the um, individual ones, the jack-o'-lantern, the cat, and the ghost. So that's an exciting step. And again, it's yours. You can make it however you want. But if you look at any of the vintage pictures of um, ghosts and jack-o'-lanterns and the little um, trick-or-treat buckets, it's very not perfect. Um, the lines are kind of wonky and things like that. So make it your own. So when I come back, this these will be all dry and it will be time for us to start with our faces. Okay, y'all, we're back and I'm going to start with the white ghost. I mean, they're dry enough, right? Some of them are still drying, but I'm able to touch all sides of this one without getting any white paint on me more than I had before. So now what I'm gonna do is just take my pencil and lightly um, draw out the little face. Now this little face is pretty easy. Just three circles, right? I think I like this face for the ghost. He, I mean, he is kind of a scary, scary ghost. He's surprised. So I'm going to lightly do two circles for the eyes and one circle for the mouth. And one of the things is making sure that I get the circles about the same size or I'll have a cockeyed ghost, <laughs> which I mean, I guess that would be okay. All right, so here's my little drawing. And now all I'm gonna do is take a fine point. And I like to use one that has kind of like stiff bristles. I may have to get another one because that one is still wet. I don't think I'm gonna put boo on the back of this one. I think I'm just gonna leave it. So let's get to painting the portion that is the eyes. Now, one thing that I did on the other one is I added the little white spots in his eyes. So I may do that as well. I just didn't think the boo added anything to it. So I'm just not going to do that one. So I do not have a steady hand. And again, not brain surgery, just using the paintbrush to create some little circles. Remember all of the paper mache and all of those vintage Halloween things they were very rudimentary as well. So give yourself some grace. At least I keep saying that because I'm giving myself some grace when painting um, these little vintage inspired mini boo buckets. These are so cute. So, so cute. And I was super excited when I tried them. Again, I made them for my own home decor um, and to give as gifts. And then I thought, oh, I need to make some more. Let me record this because it's so dabberm easy that it would make a good DIY. So there's your spooky ghost face. what you think about that? Well, that is drying. I'm gonna go on to the cat. Now here is the cat face that I did last time. And let me just say, to get the eyes even, kind of, sort of, maybe, I mean, he does look a little crazy. I think I'm going to do another one like this. Now, I have seen a couple of these where they cut up into to make some ears, and so they would cut down a little bit more, but I think it just made it too short. So I'm going to use the smoothest side, and sometimes I use the, the highest side because it's not exact. Um, I always start with the nose for placement. I'm going to do a triangle down nose. Triangle down nose, right? Um, I'm actually going to draw the whiskers because last time I tried to freehand those whiskers and that was probably not the best idea. So I'm going to lightly draw the whiskers. 
I'm going to draw one of those big Cheshire cat grins. Make it really big. And then now I need to work on the eyes. So I need to go like an a pointy oval. Okay, those eyes are not even close to being the same size or the same shape. All right, I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of like that. So let's start with, I need some yellow. So you just need a little bit. And I'm going to do the inside of the eye. Okay, y'all. I'm not sure. I need to kind of look at it to make sure that they're even. Or like I said, maybe that's part of it. Just having a crazed eyed cat, cock eyed cat for Halloween. Maybe I could go up a little more and give it a little more cat eye. I also need... Um, some orange for the nose. So it kind of looks like an alien right now. Let's try the orange for the nose. Now I will say the orange paint that I used here for the um, pumpkin, that's the same paint that I'm using, but y'all, it was very watery. So it took a long time to dry. It was the one that took the longest and that was the first one that I painted. Let's see if I can. So now I've, I've got a nose, kinda. So all my artist people out there, you're gonna do this so much better than I. And you know what I thought about? I bet you could use little terracotta pots too. I think you could use little terracotta pots and that would be just as good. These, these would be great with little terracotta pots. And then you could use them year after year maybe, right? You could put little flickering lights in them. That would be cute. Think of all the different ways that we could use this same easy um, project. So I'm going to try to outline the eye, make it go up a little like a cat eye, and come back around this one down a little. You don't want to make it too thick or too um, too much paint, but you still need to have a thin outline. All right, so we're working on it. I think I'm going to have to have a bigger pupil. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. You know, I bet you could also use paint pens. It might be a little easier with paint pens. Um, I just don't know how that they would mark over the paint. Well, one eye is bigger than the other. So there's what I have so far. And now I need some yellow to outline the nose. And it's got to be very thin. I need one of the very thin, rigid brushes to do that. And I guess you could go back and fix all of your mistakes. At least that's what I'm telling myself. If you're an artist and you decide to make these, or if you're not an artist and you decide to make these, I'd love to see it. This is where we are right now. However, I think that that nose is too wide. The outline is too wide. So I might get the hair dryer and dry this so I can fix it. I think that's what I need to do. Okay, y'all, I'm checking back in because what I ended up doing was just going back and putting a little bit more paint there. And while I still think the nose on this one is bigger than the nose on this one, um, it's just going to be a different cat, right? So now I need to do the white mouth and the whiskers on this one. So um, each one is going to come out a little bit different. And that is actually something that I like about these because even as I was working on this, uh, with my first set, I kept making changes to it. And um, sometimes that's just what you need to do. 
So I'm gonna put the white mouth on this cat. It's gonna kind of have a Cheshire grin, if you will. And because you used pencil, if your eraser is good, you can go back and erase any of the lines that you didn't use, or you can just touch up a little bit with the black paint. I just put my finger in the paint. Look what I did. I put my finger in the paint. That's no good. So I think that I'm going to, I'll wait and fix that piece over there. I can go ahead and try my uh, whiskers. And I do like the feathering uh, that, you know, where it's not exactly even or whatever. Like that. I do like that of the, the whiskers. Because it kind of looks ghostish. So it's coming along. Once this dries, the white part and the yellow part that I repainted, then I'll come back and... Um, and add the black eye, and that's when I'll fix this piece down here. So I'm gonna leave this one for now and let that dry. Our ghost just needs, this is dry now, our ghost just needs some white. It needs some little white circles in its eyes. So see the little whites of the eyes? That's what we need for our ghost. And on this one, I have them on the, inside and the outside there you go so there's our ghost all right to finish this off while some of this other stuff is drying and then we'll go back and do um the jack-o-lantern i want to show you how to complete one so what i did was use the little wire now you can use the wire or you can use, um, oh, I don't know, maybe we wanna use a silver. Do you think we should use a silver? Or does that look too much like Christmas? I do have, I do have a white. I like the glittery kind. So mm, I wish you guys were here to help. That kind of looks like Christmas to me. So I'm gonna stick with this wire for this one. Um, all I do is just find the center and then poke a hole literally with my scissors. I just, and I don't get too close to the edge because you don't want it to pull. I wanna make it equal distance. So I'm just gonna poke a little hole. It's really easy because this is very malleable. And then I'm going to kind of go right around the edge and poke another little hole. And what I did with the wire is I put the wire in the hole and brought it up like this and then just twisted it around. Twist, twist, twist. It's very malleable. So then I, I was doing it around my finger. That's originally how it happened. <laughs> um, so I did it around my finger like this and then just slid it off of my finger to make the coils in there. But honestly, the coils didn't really stay. Um, so I will give a little bit of slack and I'll cut. This is really easy to cut, very easy. Cuts with regular scissors. And again, I will I'm gonna bring it up. So I kinda need, I cut a lot this time. And I actually pinch it together and then just twist the little side around the long side. I think that kinda looks like hair. I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> I think it kinda looks like hair on the ghost. Might need a few more curls in the hair. So I just use the wire and do that part. And then I like this little black and white polka dot ribbon. So I cut me some ribbon. I think I got this ribbon at the Dollar Tree actually. So I'm gonna cut some ribbon and I'm just gonna tie a little bow 
right here. And in order to get the polka dots on both sides of the bow, I always have to kind of manipulate the ribbon a little. Pull it tight, then pull it back out. So here's what I'm talking about. See the bow, the dots are on the other side. You may just have to kind of manipulate your ribbon, just holding it and turning it. So when you flip the ribbon over, it'll be on that side. So let me cut and trim this. So you can leave the ribbon on the side or you can fish it through all of the twists and turns and you can put the bow kind of at the top and that's cute too, right? So all you need to do now is take some white crinkle paper. Um, I did try tissue paper and I just didn't like it. So I just use a little bit of white crinkle paper. And this was left over because I'm telling you, I did not want to go out and buy anything else. And so here's this one. And then you're going to have to add the candy. So let's talk about the candy. Let, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. So I was like, oh, for this project, I'm just going to make a few. I'm going to need 45 pieces of candy because y'all, have you seen how expensive Halloween candy is? Oh, it is so expensive. I was watching a live today and somebody said they spent $125 on candy. For this one, when I'm putting in the candy, I'm gonna lift up because these Twizzlers are pretty long, but oh, I was gonna tell you about the candy. So what had happened was I ate it. I, I ate a lot of the candy. I probably ate 10 pieces of this candy before I could do the project. So, I mean, I'm just gonna be honest and I'm just gonna be upfront. I, I ate it. So, if you notice, this one is missing a Kit Kat. I didn't eat that, it fell out. The little orange Reese cup in there, you know, right at the front, right? I just need to get me, oh, I'll borrow this Reese cup. Well, let's just be honest, there wasn't a lot of Reese cups in there. Almost all that bag was Twizzlers. And so this is the end. This is it. And how cute would this be to kind of leave for, you know, one of your grandchildren or one of your children, especially your littles. They don't need a bunch of candy. That's all you have to do. Now, the next one that while the cat is drying, I'm going to do the pumpkin. Okay. So let's take a look at this pumpkin face. I agree. I agree. So it's very simple. I'm actually going to do the same face um, that I did on that one just for time's sake. And it looks like I've got two big circle eyes. I've got a triangle nose. And I've got a uh, smile like, oh, help me. Yeah, that's what I got here. Mm-hmm, that looks exactly like what I have. One of these, these uh, jack-o'-lanterns that's like, why are these people taking out all my inner? So I quickly drew this one. I hope you're gonna be able to see that because it's the, the time of day. Um, and now I'm going to do the yellow and, well, let me do the white. I think I already had the paintbrush in the white. So I'm going to do the mouth for the white. Okay, y'all, there's the mouth. Now let's do the yellow. Let's do the yellow circles for the eyes. And I usually just use what's in the, the top because we don't really use that much. So I'm going to do some yellow circles. All right, there's my yellow eyes. He's coming along. And now I think I need to do the black nose. So now I need to get the very fine tip, hard square brush. And I need to get some more black. And let's do a nose. There's the nose. So I kind of need to let this dry before I do anything else. So let's go on 
to this one. So I work in stages because I gotta let this stuff dry before I can do the next one. Since I was already using black, let's go in and do the hair, the hair on this one. So what I'm gonna do is find out which way is gonna be my face. I'm gonna use this as my face. Um, and I'm just going to do some like triangles do the triangles for the hair. Not that he had, I mean, maybe he had sideburns. I don't know. We'll give him some little spiky hair. Um, and I kind of want to go all the way around to the sides. So I'll go to the sides make sure I get it to a point. I need some more hair on this side. There's one little piece right there. I think I need a little bit more, right? A little bit more on the side, maybe this side. You can have a long piece on this side. Yeah, scary. I think I'm going to do the white eyes. So let's look at it. I'm gonna do the white eyes and then I can go and the white mouth and then I can go back in with black and a little red. Now you don't have to make his eyes bloodshot and leave the bloodshot out. And I also um, put a little blood by his um, scar over there. So let's do the eyes on this one, which again are little types of circles. And so when you're making these, if you're doing different ones, I'd love to see a witch. I don't think I'm going to have time to make a witch, but I would love to see a witch. So if somebody does a witch, please post it. Oh, I'm going to make this one cockeyed. I'm going to make his eyes uneven. Um, please post it and let me see it. So look at his eyes. And I'm going to do his mouth. Um, should I do a sad mouth or mouth? Which kind of mouth should I do? I'll just do one like this. However my paintbrush goes, that's how I'm going to do it. He's going to be like, I don't know. He always looks worried. I always thought Frankenstein looked worried. Did anybody else feel that? Or was I just being too empathetic with Frankenstein? Here's my sad Franken baby. <laughs> Look at him. Mm, he's a little. Um, and so I can add some black for the eyebrows. And I can add the scar. Because what would a Frankenstein be without the scar? All right, so my eyebrows, we're gonna go up and down. Oh, that looks like an angry eyebrow. Oops. Yeah, that looks like an angry eyebrow, yeah? Ooh. Oh, well, sorry, Frank. Here's a little nose and let's do the scar. So I think I've got more room over here. So I'm just going to do a little line and then I'll do like a line here, a line here and a line here. And there's his little scar, right? Um, let's see. Now I will say that I have some little buttons, but they're very teeny tiny and I don't know. I think I'm going to put some black circles, right? I'm going to put some black circles, but I'm also maybe going to hot glue those buttons right there. I don't know. All right. Here's my circles, which are probably too far over, but when this all dries, I'm going to just use the black paint that's on my brush. When this all dries, we will add, I'll hot glue the buttons and I'll add the facial features, which is the black circle in here, the outline of the mouth, um, and 
Oh, the red. I've got to add the red. All right. Let's go back and see if anybody's dry. My cat is pretty dry. So see if you work on one, the other ones will dry. All right. There we go. I have to let the black dry so we can add the white dots. Oh, let me fix this piece down here. We needed a fix. Remember I had to paint over where I had the white over there? All right, we got, now this one is almost finished. We just need the white. Now let's go on to our pumpkin. And I need circles in the middle. I need the mouth and I need outline. Okay, there's the mouth. Now let's do the circles in the middle of the eye. There's the circles in the middle. And I do think I'm gonna try to outline, but I think I need a better brush to outline. Need something um, very pointy. So I don't know where my very pointy brush went, but we're gonna use this one. Gonna see if that works a little bit better. Okay, I think the, the black on the outline got to be a little much. I think we're gonna have to uh, go back over that with some yellow to fix that. But I need to outline the nose because it was yellow. All right, and now I do have to fix that and I will, I'm just gonna wait for everything to dry. Okay, y'all, the video is getting really long. So I'm going to add the black for Frankenstein's eyeballs. Look at him. <laughs> He's not happy. Um, I need to add the white in the eyeball of the cat. All right, so the cat is done. The cat is finished, so let's go ahead and actually complete one. And you could do, I'm gonna put, remember I'm gonna put the holes on the side, probably about an inch down from the top of the cup. For this one, I think I will use one of these because I think it looks good with the black cat. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna push it inside. I'm gonna bring it up and twist, bring it over. Now I will say that I have a tendency to put the strings way in the back so they become back or top heavy. So be careful about that. Um, let's see, could I twist this one? I could twist this one. Slide my finger out. Bring this in. That one's a little far in the back, but I wanted to at least get some of them done because I feel like all you've done is watch me paint. And you guys know how to paint and be creative. So there's this one. And you can, oh look, I could make cat ears with it. I could, I could make it look almost like cat ears, couldn't I? Make little like cat ears. That's cute. And I need some orange scrunchy stuff to put in here. Put a little bit of orange scrunchy. Ooh, scrunchy stuff everywhere. So I think I need a little bit more scrunchy. Now remember, I'm going to move the scrunchy stuff to put in the candy. Move the scrunchy stuff. The, the scrunchy stuff is just the filler. They're gonna get their candy. Something like that can make it a little bit taller. So this is your boo bucket for your cat with the candy in there. Now, probably would put a little bit more candy. We just don't have a lot of candy left. So it's pretty cute. You just need to bring out the, the orange a little bit the orange fluff in there. And here is the one with the cat. So we did it. We did the cat, y'all. All right, let's see. I'm gonna have to work on this one. I'm gonna go back to this one 
um, because he needs a dot of white in his eye and he also needs to trim the smile, I think. I think that's what we did last time is we trimmed up the smile. Okay, y'all, I am going to, here is this one. Now I've opted not to do the bloodshot and the blood on this one, just because this one looks like he's angry. But what I'm going to do to this one that I didn't do to the other one is, I'm going to glue some little vintage buttons. Yeah, that's so cute. That's so cute. Where's my other button? Okay, calm down. We got the button. All right. Lay it like this for a second. Y'all are not going to believe how stinking cute this is. Stinking cute, I tell you. Okay, here he is. And look at his bolts on the side. That's cute. That is super, super cute. Now for him, I probably will use this. And last time I used some tissue paper to make it look like hair. But I don't know if I like that. Leave me a comment below if you like that. Or do you just like the green? I thought it just added something, but it's it's kind of messy. I don't I don't know if that makes sense, but it's kind of messy. Um, and see, I have his maybe too far. Oh, I just needed to move it behind the candy. So I may just put the green in there. So I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, y'all, I made a few adjustments. I finished the pumpkin. So what I did was I go, I went back in just to clean up the lines and things, and I added the little white spot in the eyes. And then I added the shiny orange uh, pipe cleaner to this one with a little bow, isn't that darling? Now here is my original, and here is the one that we made today. So I think these are super cute. For the cat, here is my original. Here's my original with the bow to the side. It needs to be in the front though with the bow to the side. And here's the one that I made today with the, and I did add the bow because I had forgotten to add the little bow. So even though I made the same design, they look quite different, don't they? All right, here is the boo that I made originally. And here is the boo that we made today. Aren't those so cute? That one's almost exactly the same, except I didn't put boo on the outside. And here is the Frankenstein with the hair that I made the other day. And here is the Frankenstein that I made today. So I did on this one a little bit different. I squared up the pipe cleaner to um, make his head square. And I also added the button. So I've got like an injured Frankie and an angry Frankie. Maybe they were fighting, who knows? This one does not have a button and this one does. Let me know in the comments, do you like angry Frankie or beat up Frankie? Which one is your favorite? So that's it y'all. I know that this video was a lot of just watching me craft and me paint it out, but I wanted to show you really how easy these are. And one of the things is just taking the time to let the paint dry, and then you can go back and make any corrections. One of the things that I would do differently is I would get a super firm, fine point um, paintbrush if I were doing these because when you're outlining and things, oh, your brains are spilling out. 
when you're outlining, that can make a big difference. But again, I'm no artist. I just was freehanding based on some pictures and some little cutouts that I had here at the house. But I think these are super fun, y'all. So if you enjoy this type of content where I'm DIYing and making some simple crafts, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed watching me, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to be part of my YouTube family. I have welcomed so many new subscribers and I am so excited to be able to communicate with you in the live chats and through the comments. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and to comment and to join me on a live. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We'd love for you to be part of the family too. And so you don't miss anything, click that notification bell to all so you'll be the first to know when a video like this one or even a drop sale or a regular content thrifting video post. Because I do a lot of thrift with me. I do a lot of haul videos Love for it. you to come along with that. Don't forget that when you hit that notification bell to all, it will let you know when I am live as well and I'd love for you to join me. If you make this craft, I would love to see what you did. I'd love to see how you made these and how yours turned out. And if anyone makes a witch, I'd love for you to post it on Instagram or Facebook and tag me. I am at Sweet Treats and Pretties on Instagram and Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties on Facebook. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, y'all stay pretty and be sweet. Trick or treat! <laughs>